As Catherine mentioned, um, this is our ESRC-funded project. It just finished last October. And it's an interdis um, interdisciplinary project. So me as a um, cultural sociologist, Claire Melouis, who is an, or is an anthropologist, and Gillian Rose, a, a human geographer. And basically, when we set out to do this project, we didn't know we would end up in Qatar. Um, we knew we wanted to look at CGIs. We knew we wouldn't wanted to see how they construct certain atmospheres. But uh, we got the funding just when the financial crisis hit London. Um, so suddenly, all the local projects that we had chosen with the architects to focus on got cancelled and we were desperate and scared. Um, and then Alison Morrison, um, the architects we ended up working with, um, told us, actually, we have a project uh, with the Qatar Foundation that might be useful. And the Qatar Foundation um, agreed to, to uh, let us into um, their project. So that's how we ended up in Qatar. So Qatar is only a, like a case study, but it's then developed into a really much more interesting case study than we thought, um, I think. So, um, yeah, so I'll start talking. And um, if you want to interrupt me in between, please do so um, to ask any questions. So I was a bit uh, apprehensive about uh, talking to an architectural audience because I have no idea about ar architecture, about the practicalities of it. Um, so it'd be interesting to see what you think. So as you probably most of you know, the tools uh, with which architects imagine and produce future cities have drastically changed in the 21st century. And since the 1970s, architects have really steadily moved from hand-drawn images to computer-generated genera visualizations. And the use of these kind of visualizing um, software applications such as SketchUp, Rhino, or Studio Max to create particular place atmospheres in these kind of visualizations has become really the um, essential part of designing buildings nowadays. And also they envisage social occupations. So, if you think about it, CGIs have basically become the most common type of uh, image uh, media used to visualize and also market nowadays our future urban developments. And we can see them on websites, advertising boards, magazines in every city around us. I'm just looking around, seeing one, but I can't. Uh, yeah, but around Plymouth, around London, they're on the scaffolding of most new, new buildings. So, while on the one hand, digital visualization uh, technologies have expanded rapidly in all architectural studios, and as I've heard, you know, you're all being trained, students are being trained in using CGIs. It is, you know, while that has happened, um, the interesting move in architecture has also been a real concern with atmosphere um, and um, sensory effects that buildings, that urban environments um, give to people that use them. So as public life has become increasingly commercialized since the 1980s, new developments um, are promoted by developers, as you know, through place marketing. And this place marketing is very much focused in highlighting the sensory experiential qualities, the atmosphere that you could feel if you were in this future place in some future time. In this talk, we suggest that the use of visualizing technologies has become central to articulating prominent concerns with atmosphere. Oh, sorry, yeah, just wanted to show some of the um, hoardings that promote um, the um, project that we looked at, Masharab in um, Doha, in Qatar. And um, like I said, in this talk, we suggest that, using the, that the use of visualizing technologies has become central to articulating a uh, prominent concern with atmosphere in architecture because of the increased sophistication and affective capacity that digital images have by now. However, as several critics have pointed out in a range of disciplines, from economics, geography, um, to human geography, very little empirical research is done in terms of how these atmospheres are actively manipulated for commercial and economic ends in the design and production of co consumer services and goods. And I guess our project set out one of the research questions was how are atmospheres constructed, manipulated, created? 
Klingmann, in her discussion of Brunscapes, describes how architecture's focus has moved from a more functional role to this kind of more experiential role. Uh, the, the effects that architecture generates for the subjects. And we found out through our project that the architect's ability to use digital technologies in their techniques of representation has led to this what we would call virtual um, conscious, virtual engineering of sensory experiences using a wide range of sensory effects. And so far, however, nobody has really paid much attention to CGI's. It's not been a, a heavily researched image at all. The times that it, it, the, the few people that have um, analyzed CGI images like Jackson and Deladora see them just as fantastical, seductive, imagined spaces. And they actually say, and I'm quoting them here, that CGI's are destined to remain unrealized a territorial projects, flimsy icons of a global geographically geographical imagination, disembodied text traveling through complex worldwide networks. However, what we want to show or what I really want to make uh, point out is that they're far from being disembodied. They're not disembodied text and instead, as I will show through the case study, they're laboriously materialized things. Um, in order that, to depict and present very specific embodied regimes and affective sensory experiences both to the clients and the consumers of these CGI's and these future urban environments. The second point I want to um, um, make at, towards the end of the paper is also that despite living in supposedly post-colonial urban times and despite um, you know, the, the Doha CGI is being underpinned by a lot of local research. The digital sensory fabrications that produce these atmospheres are shaped by a Western universalism. And that this uh, universalism assumes also a singular Western sensibility and ignores cultural, cultural and ethnic differences. So <clears throat> this talk then is structured around um, three key areas. So I want to briefly introduce a bit of a theoretical um, background to where we're coming from and, and uh, that we apply on CGI's. Then I want to introduce the actual case study, Masharab in Doha. And then the main um, aim is really to show how place atmospheres are constructed digitally but also what the political, social implications are of this, and then a conclusion. So, the rise of the experience economy has fueled an increased concern with the notion of atmosphere. Over the years, a range of writers such as the philosopher Böhme from Germany, but also Scott Lash, um, John Nari, but more recently um, Nigel Thrift, point out that the key feature of the transformation of capitalist economies um, since the 1950s is the increased role that the aesthetic plays in ca capitalism. And aesthetization now plays a crucial role in the production and consumption of goods. So to reevaluate the relationship between the economy and aesthetics, Böhme suggests that we need to recover this notion of aesthetics to a much more ecological and sensory dimension. He really wants to pin down what that actually means in capitalism. So for Böhme, uh, what he says um, is that the new resulting aesthetics is concerned with the relation between environmental qualities and human states. This and, this in-between, by means of which environmental qualities and states are related, is atmospheres. So what we liked about Böhme is that suddenly atmosphere isn't this elusive thing that hovers around, but you can actually pin it down, it becomes material. As soon as you look at the sensory, yeah, you can analyze it and, and see something um, to it. It's not just an ethereal force that somehow um, fl flows around rooms, etc. So while much uh, discussion refers primarily to the lived and felt atmospheres of everyday life, and I know it's become very trendy in the last few years, in this research project we really wanted to look how certain practices ranging 
from landscape gardening to stage design or in this case architecture, atmospheres can be circumvented, circulated and intervened on. So what we're arguing here is that atmospheric effects are, act are actively manu manufactured. So consequently, as the sensory experiential impact of goods is becoming crucial in this kind of new, um, Böhmer calls it aesthetic economy, Böhmer suggests adding to the use and exchange value of goods the thir a third dimension. And this dimension is the staging value. And in other words, what he means with the staging value are the sensory values that transmit um, the presence of products, for example. So Böhmer indeed suggests that we need to pay more attention to, um, to aesthetic labor in this new economy. And with aesthetic labor, he refers to the totality of those activities which aim to give an appearance to things and people, cities and landscapes, to endow them with an aura, to lend them atmosphere, or to generate an atmosphere in ensembles. So architecture, we argue, are, pro are a, a prominent professional group involved in developing and anchoring this aesthetic labor in contemporary urban environments. And as Böhmer points out, architecture is reliant on the production of atmospheres because buildings play multiple roles, and not just buildings, also, I guess, public spaces. On the one hand, they're functional entities, but they're also objects of arts and branded consumer objects by now. So we argue then that digital uh, um, technologies are a key element in this aesthetic economy and specially suited to producing atmospheric place images. And comparable to computer game environments, which share similar ca characteristics to CGI's in that they're like virtual environments, CGI's can be regarded as um, Ash, James Ash um, says, as affective, affective designs, which refer to the process, and I quote him, the process of attempting to indirectly generate particular kinds of effects or responses through the material and aesthetic design of products in order to capture and hold users' attention. So while CGI's are static images as opposed to interactive computer games, we argue that the digital qualities of these images lend themselves to produce very particular atmospheric effects. But they're also very different, we argue, to what's happened before, to watercolors um, and other architectural representations or photographs. So, um, CGI's, for example, are what um, um, an, uh, an academic calls anthological, meaning that CGI's are constructed through a process of cutting and pasting, typical of digital media from a variety of resources and thereby offer complex la la layering of evocations of sensory experiences. But also, because they're digital, they can be modified very quickly and thousands of them are produced. So that results in a production of images that are endlessly malle malleable. The atmosphere is constantly, constantly reworked as it passes through many phases of development. Thirdly, the third crucial thing about CGI's is their luminosity. Um, and Dorian, um, uh, architectural critic, I think, argues that CGI is, you know, the, the objects, the buildings and landscapes de depicted in CGI's offer this kind of heightened definition and visual close closure, as well as new chromatic sta um, scales of experience. So let's then briefly move uh, to the Masharab development in Doha. At the moment, it is this. It is a building site, yeah? um, a very um, sensory, um, impressive building site, a lot of noise, a lot of dust. So um, the project then led us to work with an architectural studio in London, Alice and Morrison, who are the master planners for this uh, project in Doha. And just to give you a sense of the project, it's basically developing the whole inner city of Doha. The aim of the project is to redevelop um, 31 hectares adjacent to the government and palace offices and to revitalize the historic set center. So the project is worth $5.5 billion. Yeah, so just the scale of it, hundreds and hundreds of buildings. 
Um, the development will also provide accommodation for 25,000 people. At the moment, most Qataris um, and people from Doha don't live in the city center, they live outside. And they want to bring the people back into the city center, a common theme, in, in especially in Western developments in the last few years. So it's funded by, the, by Mashara Properties, a real estate company and subsidiary of the Qatar Foundation. And the project is to encourage families, both expats and Qatari nationals, like I said, back into the heart of the city. And we shouldn't be too, um, I mean, yeah, we should be critical, but we shouldn't be um, yeah, too critical about how they're trying to do it, because a lot of research has been gone into it. They've been researching for three years about the local architecture and so on. So it's not an instant city project. Yeah, they're really trying to, to create their own identity through this um, project. What is unique about the project is that there's been a strong investment into CGI's and image production right from the start, which is unusual. And the CGI's are key tools for the presentation um, of the project, also a platform for discussion, but also um, you know, an object to discuss the payment of fees or not. So in this particular project, the CGI's are also a important, um, an important instrument to develop a new architectural language. So both to give uh, the Masherab development a clear cultural identity expressed through planning and architecture, but also Qatar wants to develop this as a new urban model of development in, in the, um, uh, around the Gulf area. They're very keen on seeing they, they are not Dubai. They want to really distinguish themselves from Dubai and what's been happening there. So nine design architects were chosen to design the hundreds of buildings um, in this area. And because of that, um, the master planner, um, um, these, um, to, uh, the, the, the master planners appointed an architectural language advisor um, that uh, would manage these nine architectural, um, uh, the nine design architects to create a common language in this um, area. So he, what he, his role is, is really to cohere the various uh, proposed um, themes from the different architects into an overall design. So in his own words, something that, uh, one, that wants to be on the cover of a magazine. And it's interesting how he compares his architectural design basically to stage design a lot of times. So overall, the Masherab development is characterized by a really strong um, uh, art direction behind the creation of atmospheres because of this crucial role that the um, architectural language advisor has played. And one architect actually referred to the project as being um, a design, design um, designed by CGI's. So we basically spent nine months in Qatar, in London, in the different architects' offices with the architectural language advisor, um, documenting the project, uh, creating an image arch archive of the project and interviewing of over 40 uh, people, including architects, visualizers and developers. And emerged from that that the CGI's have two roles, two crucial roles to play. On the one hand, um, for architects themselves, CGI's are key tools for thinking through, um, representing and developing design um, ideas. But also, um, you know, on the other hand, they're also crucial in presenting and communicating a design to the client and others. So CGI's are both design and presentation tool, and there's often a conflict between the two. And I will discuss that in a minute um, with examples. So producing particular affective atmospheres in these images that engage the viewer and client um, with an appealing spectrum of sensory modalities has been crucial in the project. And in this talk, uh, I want to really focus on CGI's as a communication tool. Like I said, I'm not uh, an architect, so I want to focus on how they use them as communication tools. And um, how, you know, um, 
how tensions emerge from that. So for example, our interviews reveal that architects want to depict their buildings accurately, while the visualizer's role is to evoke the life or the mood of a place, as one architect explained to us. So he says that there's a huge portion of visualization which architects don't find so interesting, which is everything that's out of our control. We can design the building where we cannot say who's going to sit on a bench, for example. And we can't say if there's a bird flying or how blue the sky is going to be. So for us, this is an applied material, almost like an advertisement on top. We're aware of the power of these things. That's why we have to do it, because we need to communicate with other people. But at the same time, it distracts us from thinking about the things we really have in our control. And for the reminder of the, pay, uh, of, of the talk, I want to examine how atmospheres are produced digitally by explicitly focusing on the role that visualizers having, are having in creating you know, everything that's out of control for the architects. So, like I said, thousands of images have been produced since um, the project first started. Um, and by only 42 polished CGI's were used for the special design review meeting where the first ideas were presented to the client. So similarly, only very few out of these thousands, I would say there were at least 20,000 of them, of these images, only very few make it actually to the website or the, to the advertising hoardings, etc. So let us examine closer three key aspects of the CGIs produced for this Masherab development. Firstly, I want to uh, um, discuss briefly the actual process involved in making CGIs, but because I'm in an architectural audience, I don't want to spend too much time on it um, and just focus on the work that visualizers have to do. Then I want to analyze how place atmospheres are commercially manufactured. Um, and then look at the limited, how their lim CGIs are based on a limited range of Western experiential registers. So, this is probably very um, um, familiar to you, how CGIs are actually created. And like I said, I um, don't want to spend too much time on it. Um, you, you know that the visualizers basically obtain the 3D models by the architects. And they, they follow then, visualizers follow a very um, given script and particular steps to, to create this final image at the end. Um, so with each step, the image gets built, gets another layer of sensory experience. And slowly, the real, you know, gets created. Um, what we find most interesting is, um, you know, the, the, the minute the visualizer starts rendering the 3D model, translating it into a 2D image. So from being converted from a working picture to something that looks like a photographic picture. And with rendering, and Huda's work is very useful in that, so how does this become that? That's what we're, we were really wondering and looking at. So, and, and like Houdard says, rendering then consists of allocating texture, meaning a color, a density, a nature, or function to computerized objects. However, it's really important to point out here that a key component of CGI's is the easy replication and modification, which makes it very different to photographs, where every element is unique and different. So the last step for the visualizer is then to import this image into Photoshop. Um, and then um, to add more details, subtle lights effects, clouds, people, trees, and what the architectural language advisor described as life or entourage. And this can be done by either painting the effects using software or by pasting from other websites from e elsewhere, as our observations revealed. And this cutting and pasting we found really interesting. Um, you know, cutting and pasting of visual fragments and derived from a variety of, like, I was gobsmacked basically from online resources, from Flickr over to art libraries, from holiday photographs, promotional websites, anything that could, you know, evoke what it would be like to be there was cut, pasted, and put in. Um, and it's described by Duay, as I mentioned before, as an anthological practice, which works towards staging this kind of effect atmosphere that the picture will have. 
And as one architect um, told us this afternoon, Jay, or I, I mean, we were observing him and he, we were talking. This afternoon, Jay is working on the images. He's um, altering the way, he's altering the way with the sunlight falls, makes it more of an evening shot with longer shadows. He also needs to rearrange the trees and insert some people with umbrellas to make it look more of a wet weather shot. He saw some people from a 19th century Impressionist painting and inserted them, but they won't be the, uh, actually be used. They will use modern people, but they are to set the tone. So the skill then of the visualizer lies in being able to understand both the needs of the architect, but also to understand the client and how to um, transmit um, the atmosphere to the client. And these, require, um, um, th these requirements of the client are often um, in terms of the client wants to understand what they're uh, they buying, as one development manager said to us. The architectural language architect and others on the team recognized that some CGI's failed because, as um, Ash uh, describes in, in relation to video games, they don't get the atmosphere right. As he explains in relation to um, computer games, what um, CGI's need to do is to get your attentive, what does he call it, attentive cap captivation. Yeah, you need to look at these images and to really immerse yourself into it. If you can't immerse into it, it's a bad image. And that's how they were basically judged by. So CGI's repeatedly get sent in to and fro the architects, the visualizers, the client representatives, and constantly they're being changed and transformed again and again. And they're analyzed according to this um, comment system. <coughs> as the image circulates around different actors involved in the project. So specific instructions for the, from the visualizer, but especially from the architectural language advisor, are written around them and they're even given a mark, a grade. Yeah, this wasn't too good. So, um, yeah, so in this um, comment system, you know, we, the comments are something like more light, more people, more magic, please. Yeah, can we have quirky magic? Yeah, etc., etc. And the poor, poor visualizers have to then interpret these messages and understand what, what, what the affective mood needs to be created. And this process happens several times. Through each modification, an added and altered layer of texture, color, light, and detail, objective criteria, and consensus about decisions become more and more elusive. So some visualizers by the end were really holding their heads and saying to me, Monica, I don't know what to do anymore. What do they want? So atmosphere um, in, is something that in a certain sense is very indeterminate, a spatially extended quality of feeling, and you need to keep interpreting, and you never know if you get it right. So indeed the whole process is fraught with tensions due to the inherent ambivalence of atmosphere. And as one visualizer told um, us, he just kept looking basically at me and saying, I really don't understand. What does the architectural language admiser mean with more magic? He wants me a man, he wants a man flipping cards? I don't know. Yeah, poor visualizers. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so we can see there's a constant push and pull between you know, objectivity and subjectivity in the production of atmospheres in the images. So, could we say that there, there is a formulaic process behind creating these atmospheres where the architectural language advisor tried to make it so? So he produced a guide, uh, seven, they were called the seven golden rules for CGI views, which gives seven step-by-step uh, step -step instructions on how to compose and what to depict, showing that creating atmospheres in CGIs can be described as a rule-driven formulaic process. And as one visualizer told us, architectural atmospheres are not rocket science. There is quite a basic formula involved in constructing images. Simultaneously, um, well, as discussed above, on the one hand you have a formula, but it's also down to subjective interpretations all the way. Um, 
So a crucial rule in the making of place atmospheres was, according to the seven, rule, uh, seven golden rules, to depict a, what, uh, what the um, architectural language advisor called a memorable moment. So a CGI should be, and I'm quoting him here, a slice of life which carries a story and also a resonance, a child running and smiling towards the camera, a bike blurred and in motion. Or, as he also explained then, you know, on the memorable moment front, terribly simple, complete spin doctoring, but there's nothing like a smile. If you can't get a smile in the foreground of the picture, you're, you're on to a good thing. Not always. You don't always want a balloon and ice cream and a smile, but they're great. Smiles are good. <clears throat> so what I'm trying to point out here is that producing the right sensory atmospheres to punctuate the significance of sounds, textures, movements is an essential part in creating these memorable moments. Uh, and to do so, architects collate mood referencing imagery to capture the story, the feeling. And as one uh, person told us, storyboards are really important. So the Masharab, um, the Masharab um, CGI's we found are very unique in how they do that. They're very different to the common CGI, the hero shots of buildings. What we found with the uh, Masherab CGI's is that they're really trying to stage smaller, intimate views, carefully composed to suggest an embodied experience of being immersed in the space, taking a journey, walking through the space, not just looking you know, at it from a distance. So it's really an evocation of a lift haptic experience, a very anti-spectacular approach, if you want. You can really feel being there, you know, if you contrast it to the common CGIs we see. So pre by presenting the CGIs through more intimate, intimate views, the CGIs mediate the scale and impersonality of the plant transformation of the urban landscape and reframe it through this kind of felt place. It's much more manageable to imagine being there now. <coughs> so thrift suggests then also, um, I, I, I want to look at two features of these CGIs and I want to follow what, um, some writing by thrift where he suggests, for example, that in contemporary capitalism, light and color are the, the key to the creation of new urban places. So um, what he really points out is that luminosity and hue become more important as they heighten and extend color discrimination. And the colors of the final 42 CGIs are very striking, we think. Um, you know, the outdoor images are designed to in, in smooth, warm tones, beige, sun-colored buildings. Um, the night ones, again, you know, depict um, a very um, specific kind of sky all the time. And they all, you know, overall, um, if you look at some of the interior images, I think there's one coming after, they always emphasize the sunbeams um, and they're really um, trying to give you this kind of glowing atmosphere. Night shots, you know, look jewel-like in a way, um, if we think of Tim Adams' writing on Blackpool and the illuminations. And again, you know, they, they emphasize this kind of felt emotion of being somewhere um, and being living there. <coughs> and according to Dorian, uh, this kind of hyper-definition of the computer screen is crucial um, um, because then the object scintillates and, emit, and emits a kind of, of very attractive image actually on the computer screen, not just on paper. Another aspect of these CGIs, of the Masherab ones, is a specific evocation of mobility. All of these CGIs were developed from particular embodied camera viewpoints, and some of them had five or more camera viewpoints from you know, one place, but from different um, heights, etc. And specific um, particular camera angles are chosen, and the pictures then developed to give a particular feel of the area as experienced by a particular viewer. The most favorite one being the child view of um, an area. So the CGIs are constructed then, we would say, to evoke a very kinetic embodied encounter of place. And most people and groups um, are depicted in motion, walking, some blurring through their movement across the um, picture. And it's this feeling of constant activity which really stands out with these Masherab CGIs. 
So, to finish then almost, before I conclude, a particular problem has been how to get all these people, visualize all these people in pictures. As I said, nine um, architectural practices involved. So you can imagine all Western, um, yeah, um, New York, London mainly based. Most of them never have been to Qatar. How, do we, how can we evoke anything that we don't know? So it was really uh, difficult to visualize the correct social life of the development. Um, and uh, de the development also tried to really be different in that it was pedestrian, it is pedestrian focused, not car focused and so on. So what happened then is that very quickly the, the visualizers, the designers, the architects noticed we haven't got enough images to depict the social life. Also, they found out very quickly that most images on the internet on Arab people are actually not Qatari people because they wear quite different clothes. So panic happened <laughs> and they sent some architects to take pictures of locals in Doha so they, they could paste them then into these images. However, after a while, the client noticed that they kept pasting the same people in. So, you know, the next problem was how can we actually create more of an atmosphere and, and really depict the right um, Qatari people and a real mixture of them. So what happened in the end is then um, that a special, um, on, on, on a, during a special week, um, um, a visualization studio in London organized a photo shot in Wimbledon, South East London, to give a fresh look to these images. And they basically got these Mediterranean looking actors. Yeah, you can't really see where they're from, but Mediterranean looking actors uh, were employed and dressed up in what the director thought were Qat Qatari clothes, bought in South Hall, an area of London with a high proportion of Indian shops. And I leave it at that. Yeah. So for us, it ri raises really important questions about the ways in which these CGIs evoke kind of a somatic norm, as Nirmal Purva talks about. So the production of CGIs on the Mashera project largely reproduces the concept of this kind of universal embodied experience criticized by Tolia Kelly as based on West Westnocentric literary and sensory palettes. And it highlights, you know, the continuing influence of colonial sensibilities in supposedly by now post-colonial um, processes. So the project occupation and experience of the new urban environment at Masherab was strongly led by a Western experience of the individual body moving freely through Cartesian space and overlaid with fragments here and there of Qatari identity. So, to conclude then, in, you know, today's experience economy or aesthetic economy, whatever you want to call it, architecture has become increasingly complicit in the commercialization and branding of urban environments. And um, I think McNeil said that architecture can be now understood as a form of spatial product, basically. And following Boomer, this paper has shown the importance within architectural practices of these kind of digital visualizing technologies for staging and producing these place atmospheres that sell these spatial products. Indeed, um, the seventh rule of the seven golden rules by the architectural language advisor um, was about atmosphere. It, um, it is number seven, suggesting the use of technical software functions of focus, mist and blur as useful tools, but also highlighting oral experiences as key elements. So he said the picture must feel like the tram is going through. You need to be able to hear the bell of the tram and things like that, yeah? evoking all these sensory experiences. But also, he says that the style of people matters 101%. And a comment that underlines the importance of anchoring the stories that these CGIs tell in um, concrete social context and corporal um, mannerisms. So for us, it reflects a shift away from traditional plan and architecture-led approaches and to, towards an attempt to code to a more an ambiguous and more um, contingent idea of place. Um, however, 
Although many of the architects and the visualizers on the project agreed that atmosphere was a key component of the CGI, whenever we interviewed them, we asked them what is atmosphere, they couldn't tell us. Yeah, they couldn't really explain what it was. Um, and the ambiguity of the concept was underlined by this fact. Um, the only thing they could say is that it needed good rays. Yeah, the picture needed good rays uh, to create atmosphere. And the general consensus was only that, you know, you could only tell success by the client accepting the picture. So the client was the ultimate person who could judge the atmosphere as being right or wrong. So similar to video games, CGI's can be viewed as sensorial, ser serially produced commodities, which attempt to appeal to viewers' emotions through carefully orchestrated place atmospheres. In particular, I hope I have demonstrated the way in which the digital medium allows but never guarantees, and that's what's so interesting, we think, the production of powerful visceral place atmospheres constructed by following a very scripted formula. We have argued that CGIs can be seen as an aesthetic and affective dimension of in which software by now is writing cities. So in conclusion, we have deconstructed, I hope, some of the aesthetic side of capitalism and illustrated how in the experience economy, atmospheres are actively produced and manipulated aesthetic perceptions. So the place atmospheres produced for Masherab are strongly informed by Western sensibilities that shape many urban developments across the globe and elsewhere. And they only partially engage with the local Qatari um, culture. And we think that it's really important to look at them in much more detail and more critical because if, like um, Janeva says, uh, design is a process of enacting the social, we need to continue to interrogate what kind of sensory registers and place experiences are ingrained in these kind of architectural CGIs. But also, and we couldn't, you know, it will take another five years to examine, we need to examine what effects these um, CGIs have once they're realized as built environments. And I'll finish with that. Thank you very much. Sorry.